Hi there guys. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the WordPress transients API. So what is transients API? Uh, so, uh, transients are a way to store data in the WordPress data tables, uh, temporarily. So think of them like this, when you have a server or when you have an API and when you are fetching the data from it, you don't want the server to refresh uh, or your page to refresh every time the page loads and ultimately making your uh, page load sign uh, bigger and uh, uh, also stressing your API or your server where you're fetching the data from. So uh, I have, what I have here right now is a demo menu page setup and then where we'll use the uh, transients to output data and then test them basically. So I also have this demo plugin setup where I have, uh, as I showed you earlier in the uh, page here, uh, this is the bare minimum port to display a menu page. Okay. So let's see what uh, transient functions look like and how they work. Uh, the first function we'll see here uh, is set transient. That is what it is, uh, is used to set a transient as the name suggests. The first parameter is the transient key, which is uh, the key used uh, in the database tables to index it or like to reference it. So let's call it demo underscore data here. And the second parameter is your value for the transient. And that is what will get saved in the database tables. So uh, for now, let's uh, use an API, a dummy API I know of, JSON placeholders it's called. And let's use uh, this post uh, API. This has 100 posts to be exact. And uh, this will be a perfect example to show you how to uh, make use of the transients uh, API to um, make the uh, uh, server or API use cases effective in your site. Okay, so let's first get the data from the API. We'll call it post data, sorry, post data, and then use the WP remote get function, which is another WordPress function to fetch data from APIs or uh, anywhere to be now. Let's sorry, let's get the URL and then what we want to do is retrieve the body remote retrieve body post data and then let's decode the JSON because we know it uh brings JSON. And post data. So now we have the post data here from the API. And uh, let's first comment the transient function. We are not setting transient right now. Then let's just echo or sorry, output the data here. We'll just use up for each loop for now. And uh, this post data as key value and then echo it. Uh, in a simple paragraph. Well, I don't and let's take a look here. Uh, so, okay, we will just uh, echo titles for now. So, let me just use and uh, interpolating interpolation basically. Uh, value and then title. So what this will do is basically echo our uh, titles one by one up to all of those titles basically because we just uh, looped over all of the data. Uh, for now, this doesn't look very organized. Let's just use a uh, ordered list here. To do that, let's just use an echo again and we'll create an oval tag. And then in the end of the 42, again, close the OL tag. Okay. And instead of P, let's replace with LI ties. Now we'll have these in an ordered list. As you can see, it's 100 uh, titles here. So as you can see here, these are being loaded from the API here. And every time you load the page, um, it fetches the data from the server. 
Now, what we want to do is avoid this every time the page loads and maybe load it after a certain amount of uh, period or uh, uh, say we have a, um, a refresh time we know of in a 24 hours maybe. So that's where you use transients. So let me show you how you can use transients here and then save the page, sorry, page from uh, uh, loading the day over and over again. As you can see here, it's 0 0.32 seconds right now, the page load time. I'm using this query monitor plugin to check the page load time and the page data size, etc. Okay, so uh, let's apply the transients. So first things first, we'll use the set transient function to save the data from the transient. As we can see here, post data is our uh, data. So set transient, uh, the first data, so the first parameter is the key for the transient and the second is the value. Third is the main uh, thing here, that is the expiration time. So before uh, uh, doing that, let's take a look first at how the expiration time can be set. So we have a few constants already available from WordPress, uh, uh, such as minute in seconds and then hour in seconds and then there's day in second. You can use any of these three to uh, say, uh, save, uh, sorry, uh, save the transient for uh, uh, a few minutes, few hours or uh, days, months and years, anything. So in this case, we'll want to save it for 24 hours. So we can do 24 asterisk and hour in seconds. Now what that will do is, as we have already discussed, this will expire in 24 hours. Again, this is not yet implemented for our front end. It, it will still load the whole um, API over and over again because we'll need another function to fetch the data from the transient and to load that in our site, uh, basically. So let's get that. Uh, we'll create another variable. Basically, we'll just override the post data variable because that's how you uh, use the uh, this function that will get transient and then we we'll use the same key we use to store the data demo transient okay so now what this does is fetches the data from the transient but uh, in order to work this uh, so that it loads only the time uh, the transient is not available you would have to uh, set it in a conditional so let's do that We'll also need to call this, uh, sorry, uh, over here at the top so that our conditional will work. If, let's set a conditional, if not post data, then let's uh, say in the transient like this and it's uh, okay yeah so you can see now now this is how transients are uh, implemented so you have the transient fetcher first so as you can see the first time it loads it will basically be false or empty because the data isn't there and then it will invalidate itself so the our api will uh, be used to fetch the data and then set the transient and then again use the the get transient to um, fetch the data in the post data variable so what that will do is um, we have the uh, post data from the api now if you were to reload the page uh, you see this 0 0.06 seconds how we switch the from directly 0 0.36 to 32 seconds to 0 0.06 seconds basically 0 0.06 maybe uh, so this is how the transient uh, api works this seriously uh, in decreases the API load time or your page load time because you won't have to load the API over and over again every time the page loads and the data is saved in your database so you know that it's saved and uh, you can use it uh, uh, consistently without even uh, having to load it or save it somewhere else uh, cache or anywhere else so this is how you use transients API. There is one more function that is the delete uh, transient function such as like this and then you just give it the parameter of the uh, transient key. 
This is really not uh, required because transients are self-exploratory, uh, I mean self-exploration. Uh, so you don't need to use the link transient analysis until you really want to do so. So uh, in my personal experience, I haven't used the lead transient uh, almost ever. But just so you know, you know this is there. And uh, there's uh, one more thing that is when you are using these transients and you want to save uh, data in the multi-site network table. For that, you just use a, a, a site uh, prefix uh, function such as get site transient and then set site transient. As easy as that. Go all the things we saw earlier goes the same, such as everything will be the same. The parameters and everything is just it will be saved in the network table if you have a multi-site uh, enabled. So that's it. Uh, I hope this works for you. And um, if you have any questions, please uh, note down in the comments or anywhere. Uh, I'll see you in another video. Have a great day.